bring back memories to some of you with the headphones clamped to your head and the cat's risk of poised and saying hush to everybody in the room the moment you heard something. Well, in 1924, when Kirk came to the ABC and uh, when I joined it as well, we had a new type of microphone as a result of all the research done by the radio engineer. So we're going to move straight to that one. Now I'm talking to the Round Sykes magnetophone. This is a fairly heavy and large uh, affair. It used to be in a, what we used to call the meat safe, on a great stand which you wheeled about the studio with appropriate squeaks. And it was sung in a, in a sort of sling of um, sorbo rubber, and on the top of it was this meat safe affair, which is of blue gauze silk. Well, this was a very distinct development, as we heard it, but Kirk again will tell us of the real development that took place with the incoming of this particular microphone. Well, the uh, round Sykes microphone, when it first came in, was hailed as a great advance, and it certainly was. I think it was the first moving coil microphone, and for a coil, it uses a flat coil of aluminium wire, very light, which is stuck onto the microphone proper uh, with uh, three or four pieces of cotton wool and Vaseline. That had a disadvantage because the uh, microphone has to be polarized with a heavy current, which made the microphone hot, and in the middle of a, uh, an orchestral broadcast, it wasn't infrequent for the Vaseline to melt and the coil to fall out. The quality on this microphone was very much improved on the uh, first one you heard, the Peel Connor, but it was very insensitive and required a large amount of amplification, and that was one of the very great difficulties in those days. It was a microphone, of course, as you said, cumbersome, and it weighs about 20 to 25 pounds, and it's not the sort of thing you could have as a hand grip microphone like we do nowadays. Uh, but there it is, and it was in use for s three or four years in the BBC and all its studios, and occasionally for outside broadcasts, but only very occasionally. So we pass on to the next microphone. Well, now, I deliberately gave a pause there, and we may pause between the microphones, because you've got to shift from one to the other, because you may have noticed uh, that hiss that came up in the background just before I started to talk. Uh, I'm talking now into the Rice microphone. Some of you still probably see them from time to time in pictures of broadcasts in studios. It's uh, eight-sided. It's quite small. It's only about five inches across. Uh, eight-sided and is white with a black face, but in the center of the black face is a white gauze. And this microphone was used for outside broadcasts, for studios, and for every utility purposes of the BBC from about 1927 uh, right through Savoy Hill days up till uh, even into Broadcasting House in 1932. Well now, just as we leave in the last minute we've got, we're going to hop about from one microphone to another and see if you can uh, spot which one it is. Uh, this one, you know what this is? This is a microphone in common use in Savoy Hill I told you about. If you guessed it, if not I'll tell you. It's the Round Sykes Magnetophone. That one, you should have been able to tell by the noise just before I spoke. The Rice microphone. Did you get that? And now I'll give you an easy one. I don't think you'll have very much difficulty in guessing which one this is. And perhaps you won't remember the name. The Peel Collar microphone. The Peel Collar microphone used in the very earliest days of broadcasting when the BBC started. And on this microphone, uh, Kirk, Shorter and myself, We'll say good night to you as it's the microphone which was first used by the BBC and the sentimental reasons, uh, having first used it in 1922, in 1949, we say over the field, Connor, thank you and good night. You've been listening to BBC Close-Up number three.